Richard Raymond here at Seaport Hotel and World Trade Centre in the beautiful Seaport district in Boston, um, actually right by our herb garden. Um, today we're going to make uh, some braised short ribs. Um, they're kind of Asian inspired. Um, the short rib is a great piece of meat, um, but it can be a little bit uh, tough uh, due to the, the way it's made up. Um, first thing we're going to do is toast our Szechuan peppercorns. Um, Actually, they're not related to black pepper or anything. It's actually um, completely different. It has also more of a, a lemony flavor. Um, they're great. Um, but any kind of dried um, pod, i.e. coriander seeds, what you want to do is toast them first. Um, and that kind of releases the natural oils. So I have a pan here that's warm. And you just want to put them in. A little windy, but it should be OK. We're just going to toast them, just kind of move them around and you'll start smelling the fragrance and it does give a lemony. Um, be careful, don't touch your, your, your face after you've handled these, you can actually start numbing your, your, your lips. So um, use a lot in Chinese cooking, Japanese as well. So while they're toasting, we're going to start the rest of the marinade. Here I have about half a cup of soy sauce and this is a dark soy sauce, um, this one. You can use your regular Kikamans from uh, the, the supermarket, it doesn't matter, or even the light soy sauce, it, it doesn't mean it, it's less, um, it's just the way it's processed. To that, we're going to add some brown sugar. What the brown sugar is going to do when we put this into the meat is help caramelize it and you're going to get a really good texture. So we're going to put in a couple of uh, teaspoons, tablespoons of brown sugar. What we want to do, because this can be awfully strong. We're going to let it down with about half a cup of water. It can be regular water, but this is a purified water, whatever kind of floats your boat. And again, this isn't an exact science. It's what kind of you like um, as you go along with this and, and kind of mess around with it. We have a thumb of ginger. I'll just check my... And these are starting to really toast nice. This is a piece of ginger, but easy way to, 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 instead of peeling it with a knife or a peeler, is, is just to use uh, a spoon. And what you can do is you just kind of scrape down the skin of the ginger, because sometimes, as long as it's not too nodgly, nodgly, is that, that's a good word? <laughs> uh, and as you can see, it comes off really easy, um, and it's a lot easier than trying to do it with a peeler, so you just kind of... Um, scrape that skin off. What we're going to do is um, grate this into our soy sauce. So again this is about a tablespoon but if you like ginger more, um, if you like less, you know it's completely up to you. Um, but it gives it a great flavour. And all we're really doing is, is, is layering different flavours and stuff that kind of makes sense. Ginger, garlic, green onions, you know, sesame. That looks good. So that's our ginger. Next, got a few cloves of garlic. Um, again, we're just going to kind of crush these up. And we're going to chop them. It doesn't have to be too... Uh, I don't actually like to chop garlic too fine. Um, it kind of loses too much. And you never really want to put uh, garlic in a blitzer because too much water comes out and, and you kind of lose, lose the pungency of it. Next I have here is uh, some tahini paste. Tahini is uh, nothing more than pureed uh, sesame. Um, when it comes, it, you'll find it usually separated. You've got the, the, the hard pack and then the oil on the top. What you want to do is mix it up. Uh, so we're going to put about a table spoon and a half into our mix. Okay, so we've got our tahini in here. Next we're going to put our uh, sesame oil, dark sesame oil. Um, again, you don't want to put maybe a table, table and a half spoon into that. Um, and I can smell now the uh, Szechuan peppercorns. They kind of given off and released the oil. They're an interesting uh, kind of looking thing. Um, and what we're going to do, we have a coffee grinder, and we're going to grind these. And when you do this, you can you can actually do as much as you want. Um, it's actually easier to do a uh, more than this recipe calls for and then you can keep it in an airtight container and use it again. It's one of the key ingredients in Chinese fire spice so if you kind of smell that uh, lemony that's what it is. Um, so we're just going to put this in our coffee grinder. We 
we'll just get a couple of blitzes. And that's our puree right there. So what you want to do, again, it's not overly pungent. Um, what they usually do is mix it with chilies and it kind of acts like that, um, but it's not overly uh, burning. So it's not really going to give you the burning, but it just adds another flavor. So next we're going to whisk this up. So we've got our marinade there. And any time I make a marinade, it, in this, it, any time that you do, uh, even a fish or any meat with, with a marinade, I like to put a little bit on the side. And um, what that does is you can, when you finish the dish, you can finish it with a little bit of sauce. You never want to use the marinade with the dish um, because obviously it's got the blood from the, the beef or chicken, whatever. You never want to do that. So just put a little bit on the side. So we're going to put a little bit back into our bowl, and you'll see when we use it at the end, so it's kind of two-faced there. So here's our beef ribs, uh, beef short ribs have been marinated uh, for about six to eight hours. You know, you could do it overnight. Um, you don't want to leave it too long, otherwise, uh, the, the, especially the soy sauce, the salt in it will actually start going too much. So you want to do it about six to eight hours. Anytime you do marinate meat or fish, Put it into the marinade and always put it into the refrigerator. Don't leave it sitting out, um, it won't be good. What I also like to do, make sure you turn it at least two or three times um, just to coat that. And these have been uh, sitting in, and you can see uh, they've taken on kind of a, a darker kind of color. And then what I like to do is take them out of the marinade. You really don't want to reuse this marinade again. It's kind of done, uh, it's, it's served its purpose. As I said before, um, you wouldn't want to serve this because, again, you had the blood juices and everything. So they kind of put that on the side. Another thing also, what's, uh, you may see at some people's barbecue is where they have the, the raw pan, you know, with their burgers or something, and then they put the cooked meat back onto the same thing. Don't do that. Um, you'll get sick. Um, you always want to use a clean pan, different one. No, otherwise, you're going to have cross-contamination. So we've got our grill fired up, um, and every grill is different. Um, it's like every oven or stove has, has got a temperature. What you should do is try to uh, get to know your grill, I guess. Uh, know its hot spots, its cool spots. And uh, so this has been going good. What we've done before, uh, we turned the, the, the gas on, is uh, we oiled the, 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 the grates. So that's going to help it uh, from sticking. What we want to do with these, we want to put them onto the hottest part of the grill, first so we're gonna which I know is around here just by feeling I can see there so what we're gonna do is go directly onto the grill another thing people like to do the old uh, backyard uh, barbecue is they like to you know always be moving stuff around you don't want to you want to kind of put it on to the grill and leave it um, what's that gonna help do is gonna help one, st uh, help stop the meat sticking. It's all going to start to caramelize the outside because you're going to get, with the brown sugar in there, you're going to get the nice kind of caramelization. If you want to get really fancy and do like the fancy restaurant marks, uh, you kind of put it at one angle and then you move it at 45 degrees. Um, so we're going to let these sit for about two minutes, cooking away. Um, again, you know, the char this is kind of a gas grill, but char you can use a regular charcoal grill, yeah, any, any of the ones. Uh, so we're going to kind of turn these over. You can see they're starting to get really nice kind of crunchy on the outside. That's the best bit. And these you kind of want to take them to around, you know, depending how you like your meat, obviously. Uh, but I like it about kind of medium rareish. One of the things when you're looking to test meat, um, the doneness of it, you're looking for the spring back. Um, the more it springs back, uh, the rarer it is. If something, uh, there's no spring back, then it's well done, it's kind of. So again, that's a, another thing you learn. Obviously, if you want, you can use a, a thermometer, but something like this, you don't really need it. You can brush this with some of your leftover marinade. Um, was there kind of, if you, at the end, uh, as you're going, 
and it kind of helps to so give it more of a glaze. But these are looking pretty good now. So we'll let these cook for maybe another four to five minutes and then after that we're going to plate them up. All right, so we turn the ribs, kind of move them off to the side, um, just kind of finishing off the cooking. Again, getting to know your grill, where your hot spots and where it's kind of not until this is just, they've got the nice caramelization. Obviously you don't want it black and burnt. Well, that's what it means, black is burnt. Um, we're gonna serve this uh, with a little garnish of uh, green onions. Scallions, spring onions, depending on where you're from. Um, what I've done, I put these in ice water. Um, a lot of vegetables, what you can do, uh, especially more the hardy vegetable, you put it in ice water and that will stop it cooking um, or browning before it's cooked. So we just put these right from the ice water onto the grill. So by the time these are cooked, we're going to be ready to plate up. I've added, uh, we're going to serve this with a, a, a mango um, coleslaw, which is, is nothing more than nothing more than uh, shredded cabbage. Uh, we let that down with a little bit of rice wine vinegar, trying to keep that, all the flavors going the same way. Chopped cilantro, um, julienne mango, there's a little hot pepper in there as well. Again, whatever you, you like. So we're just going to kind of plate our mango coleslaw. This kind of gives it more of the, the restaurant-y feel for you. And then, you know, probably a good portion, I would say, is two pieces of the ribs. Um, depending, you could have three, um, you know, depending on the size. Kind of just put them to one side, kind of stack them, maybe down like this. Maybe we do three for this one. That looks like a good one. And kind of put that there. And then what we have here, we have some of our uh, marinade that we didn't marinate any of the beef in. So we can just put that over the top. Kind of finish it off. And we've got a couple of green onions we're just gonna lay over. And then the last thing was in the garden earlier and some of our Thai basil has come through. You could put cilantro, whatever you like. I just take some of the green kind of add to it, pluck that off, and put it like that. And there it is, Asian spice, beef ribs, mango coleslaw.